Hello and welcome again to Lard Island. Here we go with part four of the chain of command video. Uh, this is going to be the first turn, number of phases, the first turn in a run through game of chain of command. So let's see where we go from here. Okay, so here we are. We've played our pre-game phase and the, you can see on the table here that the British have got their jump off markers position very close to their starting edge, whereas the Germans who are defending the farm, that being the primary objective of the game, have got their three jump off markers pretty close to that. As we look at it on the left they've got one in a wheat field, in the centre they've got one in a small orchard in front of the farm, and on the right again as we look at it they've got the jump off point in a hedgerow there. However, uh, they also have a fourth jump off point because the objective of the game is the attack and defense of the farm They will always have a jump off point on the objective. So we place one here on the farm Right here. We have our first phase of play when we roll the dice for the British I'm going to put the dice down the left hand side of the screen when we roll for the Germans I'm going to put the command dice across the top of the screen then we'll indicate on the image exactly what movement is taking place and why. Now the British here have rolled a six. Now a single six tells them that the next phase is going to be a German phase. The roll of a single five increases their chain of command dice, which we're going to put down here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. That increases that to one. They roll a four, which would allow them to activate a senior NCO. And you can see that he has come onto the table here just pretty much in between the two blue arrows by the telegraph pole there. That's our platoon sergeant who we brought on at this stage. The three and the two both allow us to bring on, well the two technically allows us to bring on a section of infantry with their NCO and the three allows us to bring on a junior NCO with his section of infantry. So the rules are slightly skewed to uh, allow for generally the movement of the main portion of your force which is going to be your infantry sections. So here we brought two of them on, one on the road, they're advancing fairly cautiously there, and one uh, in the centre uh, by the small tree there. It was a larger tree but we've replaced it with a smaller one because the larger one, which you probably saw in the earlier photo, stops you seeing what's going on in the game. So that's explained what's happened there, that's our first phase. So we then roll for the Germans. Uh, six, five, again the six tells us that the next phase is going to be the British, it's going to pass to the opposing player. The five increases, as you can see top right, the red German chain of command dice. The three allows us to bring on a junior NCO and his squad of men. The two allows us to bring on a squad of men. The one allows us to bring on a weapons team, so for example the Panzerschreck team as part of the German force. However, the Germans have decided they're going to keep their powder dry and they're not going to uh, display themselves yet. They're rather more keen on uh, getting an ambush in once the British get a bit closer. So we move straight on to the next phase, which again is a British phase as we know. Now here we go, British have rolled a six, so the next phase is going to be German. They rolled a five and a five, so we see bottom right, the chain of command dice has increased up to three. They roll a two, which allows them to move one of their infantry sections. Now we can see here, bottom left, that the two that they have used to move the infantry section on the road, you can see them moving up, and more towards the middle, the one they have used to move forward the rifle team of the infantry uh, section there, and the Bren team has left being left further back, which is covering their advance forward. Now the next phase, the fourth phase in this turn, the Germans roll a six, a pair of threes, and two ones. Now the six, again, tells us that the next phase is British. There's no fives, so no increase in the chain of command dice. And they could bring on two uh, squads with their junior NCOs on the three, or uh, two ones would allow them to bring on two weapons teams, so maybe they would want to bring on an MG42 team or a rifle team or again the Panzer Shrek. But in fact all they've chosen to do, and you can't see it very well because of the uh, farmhouse there, is bring on the uh, 250, SDK said 2509, that's the light uh, reconnaissance half track with a 20mm cannon which is commanded by a junior NCO. So that's the way that we end 
the fourth phase of this game. In phase five, the British have rolled a five, which increases their chain of command dice, and four threes. Now that's a slightly unusual roll, but four threes allows them to activate four of their junior NCOs, which actually allow them to activate all three of their rifle sections, uh, and the tank. Now they have decided to bring on their tank, a Churchill tank, which you can see arriving on the bottom left. I haven't put an arrow on it, otherwise it would obscure the tank. And they're moving up their rifle section on the road, and the junior NCO in the field has dropped back and brought forward his Bren team. He's got two uh, command activations he can make. He's used one to move himself back, and he's used the second one to send forward the Bren team. So that means that the uh, rifle team that you can see on the hedgerow hasn't been activated in this turn. Uh, they could have brought on their third rifle section, which is part of their force, but they've decided that they're not going to. They're looking to push forward and then make a decision later on in the game where they want to bring this on. So we move to the Germans. A single six roll tells them that the next phase is going to be British. A four would allow them to activate one of their senior NCOs. Two twos would allow them to activate a pair of uh, rifle squads, pair of infantry squads, and a one would allow them a weapons team. However, what they've done here is they've decided to just combine a one and a two to make a three. You can add up, you can't divide down uh, in chain of command. And that has allowed them to activate the uh, junior leader who is uh, commanding the light half track, which moves down to the farmhouse, as we can see here. No fives are old, so no change in the chain of command dice. Now the British roll a six, so the next phase is German. They roll a single five, so we see the chain of command dice moves up. And they don't roll three ones. Three ones are three uh, weapons teams. Now what they've done, on the left you can see a thinner line. Now that indicates them splitting off just two men to, to advance as scouts. They've run down the road pretty rapidly there to the corner to see what they can see. Uh, the British section there is holding back, as is the tank. In the centre you can see a green arrow. That indicates that the rifle team there is moving up to that corner, but it's doing so going tactical, which in other words they're making the best use of cover available. They're limiting the amount of distance they can move in order to then take up good cover. Whereas on their right, in the centre of the picture, you can see the Bren team, which has advanced normally up to the hedge in order to I'll look across to see what it can see, and <laughs> they can see quite a lot. The Germans activate now <coughs> with five command dice, three, two, 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 and one. Now that's no increase in the uh, uh, chain of command dice, um, and the fact that there's no six tells them that the next phase is going to be British, but they do have an option there of... of uh, uh, doing an awful lot in terms of opening fire. Now they've got three twos allows them two sections to activate and uh, that's, sorry three twos allows them three sections to activate and a one allows them the weapons team. However starting from the left you can see that the half track is firing so what they've done is combine one of the twos with a one and that is firing its cannon down towards the British uh, who were on the corner of that field. You've got the Ger another German section is deployed around the orchard and the corner of the road. Now they're firing down towards the um, <coughs> they're firing down towards the British scouts, and in fact one of those has been killed. Um, the uh, half track has actually just caused a point of shock on the rifle. There, fortunately for the rifles, they're taking good cover because the cannon actually reduces cover. And then you can see there's a, another uh, rifle uh, infantry section over on the right along the hedgerow on the road which is firing across uh, there. So the Germans have actually opened up with pretty much uh, all they've got in that situation, in that position, to try and halt the British advance. So we move on to the next phase and we can see that the British here rolled a 6, so the next phase is German. They rolled a 5. Now, that's important because it means that their chain of command dice total is up to 6. We'll see how the chain of command dice are used throughout the game rather than me explain it here. 
um, but it does mean that they have got an active chain of command dice they can use. They've rolled a four, which is their platoon sergeant. He's moving up, albeit fairly slowly, uh, but they have uh, moved up the uh, two teams as part of the section on the road, one being the uh, rifle team, which has moved up to join the, uh, the scouts who they sent forward, and the other being their Bren team. So we're into the tenth phase in the first turn, and the Germans have rolled a five, which increases their chain of command dice up to two. They rolled a four, a three, a two, and a one. Now they don't have their senior NCO on the table at the moment, who's the guy commanding their platoon. He's basically considered to be back, deciding when to deploy the rest of his troops forward. Now they could bring him on now, however that would restrict his ability to bring on troops from behind because he would be in the heat of the action. So they've used the three to fire with the uh, light half track and that fires down onto the uh, rifle team who are <coughs> on the corner of the field there. Um, <coughs> they are uh, basically lose a man killed and are shocked by that. Uh, the Bren team who are across on the right are receiving a lot of fire from that hedgerow. They take one man dead and four points of shock which is pretty much uh, affecting their ability to function and that does actually pin that team which is going to mean that they are taking better cover but they are also reduced in their effectiveness when firing. Now the next phase the British roll three fives which is nice from a point of view that it's building up a reservoir of their chain of command dice but at the same time it's not ideal in the situation they're in. They roll a three they desperately need to get things happening here. So they are using the three to move their tank forward and in the middle you can see on the four their platoon sergeant is waving the flag and rallying his men. He, he's got three points uh, of command initiative that he can use. He could have reduced the shock by one point on one of the teams and then use the other two points to get them both to fire but at this point in time they're both pinned, they're both so shot up that really he's more concerned about them running off. So he's giving them a stern talking to and getting them motivated in the centre. And that's all the British can do in that phase. Which means when the Germans uh, get to roll, they're obviously hoping for a good dice, uh, dice roll of their command dice in order to put more pressure on the British. But funnily enough, they roll exactly the same roll again, which increases their chain of command dice. But the four, with no senior NCO on the table, they can't activate him and they can't split that four down. So all they get to activate in that turn is the uh, 250, which is moves forward and is firing its machine guns there. If it was firing its cannons, it wouldn't be able to go so far forward. The Germans have recognized at this point in time, they've got to do as much damage as possible before the tank gets up. So they are attempting to shorten the range there and really put some pressure on uh, the British in the centre. Now, the British get the next phase. They roll a single six, which again tells us that uh, uh, the next phase is going to be German. They roll a three, with which they move the tank forward, and they roll two twos and a one. Now, what they do here is they're combining the two twos together to make a four. They uh, then activate their platoon sergeant, who rallies the men further, and he then ends the turn. Uh, you can see that we put a cross through the active chain of command dice he had there. Now, because he'd rallied sufficient shock off those of the section in the centre, they have now become unpinned at the end of the turn. So there we are. That ends the first turn. You'll have to join us in the next video to see the next turn.